he is here. And he is angry because somebody else wasn't here. And that was the one that tried to get him to come. And he was telling me and Keith. And all we could do is just stand there and listen. Did you know faithfulness? When you get out in this world and try to witness people, and they make it here and you're not here, did you know they get angry at you? They can, they got it right. Did you know we, we have church sometimes before service? Sometimes God comes in before Sunday school. We've had people pray and get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And we're about ready to dismiss and some people are just coming in. You, you don't feel that spirit. You can get, there's no way you can feel the excitement of that just coming in when, when the Spirit has just left. Amen. Right. And there's all kinds of excuses I can give. I ain't never had that problem. Because it seemed like to me when God saved me, it was the most important thing in my life. Right. And I didn't have to go up there and tell them. I didn't have to stand and tell them that, that uh, I, I'm, I really love church. I could go to church seven days a week. And we have church three days a week. Now go back on the calendar and see how many of these three day a week that you made it. It's kind of like mucin eggs, I tell you. This one commercial calls that thing a booger. You know, they got a six hour, they got a 12 hour. Well, if you take the 12 hour, you can make it back home to take another 12 hour, and you won't ever see that booger. But if you take a six hour down about the middle of the day, that booger shows up and you start feeling bad and you start doing this. Did you know that devil is a booger? Yes. You can't take a six hour and expect for him to be gone the whole day. That's the reason, uh, I believe that's the reason Daniel prayed, you know, at morning, evening, and, and night. He didn't want nothing, that booger, to show up in his life, never. Amen. Now I'm talking about mucinex. <laughs> this is kind of what kind of touches me sometimes and when I see things happening in your life and ain't nothing in the world but a stinking booger. And that's what it looks like. And, and one woman said, I was hungry. But I've lost my appetite. Did you know you can make people lose their urge to come to church? You can make them lose their appetite by the way we act and the way we perform our life in God. Now, you can get mad at me if you want to, but I'm going to tell you one thing. If you get mad at me, you're getting mad at God. Because I ain't got my Bible open up here this morning. But we're talk, still talking about Solomon. Solomon lost the things. He had all kinds of wisdom. And he had all kinds of money. But I'm telling you what. He got distracted from God. With his job. God gave him that job. But he couldn't do fulfill the, the purpose of God. Doing it God's way. And he tried to do it his way. See. When you've got a job, if your job is interfering with you being at church, I'm telling you, you need to be praying about that job. Right. 
And right now, James is on, they put him on seven tens. You may think this is crazy, but you know God might have a better job for you. And when a job, I mean, I've done this down through my life. When he started interfering with church, I quit. And then I got a better job within just a few days. I had a better job than I had, paid more money, and I got to be at church. See, we're afraid. We are afraid the devil is lying to us, and we're on that six hour abuse net. And that booger hangs a hold of your leg, just pulling you down. It's the reason you're sick all the time. Did you know when you're having trouble spiritually, it affects your physical part? You'll be sick. You'll feel sick. You know why? If there's a spot down inside of here that's being left out, there ain't no way a man can work seven twelves and read like they want to. Right. Now, I know uh, God's going to do something for James because he loves God. Yeah. Now he come back down here to church and he's got back in and then all of a sudden he's got this job that's working in seven tens. Now you know he's going to be wore out when he gets off tonight. Sure. He's going to come to church. He's going to tell me. See, when you start praying about things. Amen. See, when I stood up here and I said, I'm going to pray to Courtney, and everybody thought I was joking. Because they were fixing to put her on hours and it was going to affect her church life. Well, we just said a small prayer. I didn't mean I was going to make her lose her job. But did you know she ended up with a better job? She's She's off every weekend and she gets off every night so she can be at church and revival if we have revival every night. Amen. Right. Are you afraid to do what the preacher man says do? If you are, you need to be in these altars. Sandy feet. There is a way to do this thing. I'm not proud beating you this morning, but I'm telling you, you can be faithful and fulfill the purpose of God. I'm not condemning you. I'm preaching the truth to you. Now I know what the truth will do. It will set you free. It'll make a believer out of you. See, everybody looks at God like, uh, you know, they get these things, natural things, and they think God's blessing them. That ain't God's blessing. Well, I paid my tithes, and I got this, all this new stuff. Think the reason. It's your reasonable service to do that. I think the reason that you're you're in debt. Did you know we got a new roof? Got a new power box downstairs with